There is no doubt that COVID has changed global operations on every level. For over two years, many in-person events have been canceled, rescheduled, or moved to online platforms. In this new world of work from home, hybrid courses, and virtual meetings, some scientific societies are starting to return to in-person events. But with all of the advances in digital conferencing technologies, why meet in person? And more generally, why do scientists even attend conferences? To fully understand the in-person conference, I came out of hiding, packed my bag, and drove to sunny, or er, foggy, Toronto for the annual meeting of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology. This was the first in-person meeting for the Society since 2019, and since that meeting was hosted in Australia, many hadn't attended since 2018, the last time it was in the U.S. People came from all over the world for different purposes. Some attended the conference in person to share the research they're doing and hear what others have found. What are you hoping to take from this conference? I want people to learn more about fossil frogs and increase like the, the knowledge that we have about Central American frogs and get to know different people working in different topics and learn more about what's going on in paleontology. For younger members of the society, the face-to-face -face time is important for networking or finding open jobs. Deborah, what did you come to present at this meeting? So I came to present a talk on using a virtual environment to supplement field work. You walk around, you have a little avatar, and all the information to build a stratigraphic column, geologic analyses, all that's embedded in the different layers and in different areas. So the kids have to walk around and find all the information that they need to then complete the larger assignment. Why do you come to these meetings? Why do you think other paleontologists, other scientists come to meetings like this? For me, it's definitely a networking tool. I'm finishing up my PhD, I'm starting to look for jobs, and so for me it really is a time to just talk to a lot of people, get to know a lot of people. James Napoli had this to add. So my research that I presented on here is broadly speaking about how to tell juvenile dinosaurs uh, apart from one another and to tell what species they belong to. This has been a really big problem in dinosaur paleontology for a very long time. I looked at modern animals and tried to chart how they grew and what kinds of changes occurred during their growth and then applied that to the fossil record to try to test the, a lot of hypotheses about which juvenile dinosaurs belong to which species. What are you hoping to get out of coming to a conference like this, presenting your research and just being in person? So being an early career researcher like I am, it's really nice to just be able to meet people at conferences like this, right? Get exposure for my research, try to talk to people about what I'm doing, get their feedback. It's just really, really important. And it's a good, good way to get people to know who I am. And in presenting my work in particular, I'm really interested to see what other people think of the solutions to the problems that I've proposed. Uh, I don't think everybody's going to agree with me, but I'd be really interested to talk with them about why they don't to see if we can build something that's even better. And those types of conversations work out much better in a face-to-face -face setting. It's so productive to sit down with somebody over a meal or over a drink or whatever, even if you're just outside of a conference, one of the conference lecture halls and just chatting about a talk you just saw. It's always so productive to do it in person. So it's a really wonderful opportunity. These meetings provide opportunities to watch the more experienced members update the crowds on their research. Oh look, there goes Tom Holtz. I'm sure he'll be talking about tyrannosaurs. And I'm talking about non-predatory theropods. So Wait, what? Here's, you know, T-Rex over here. That's better. For many, these conferences are a chance to catch up with old friends and colleagues. As people embedded in academia, once we have our degrees, we mostly scatter across the country or internationally to secure jobs. The isolation from loved ones and familiar faces extends beyond what we all experienced with COVID. I managed to catch up with Steve Brusati, who had this to say. Well, the meeting so far has been really fun. It, it'll continue to be because I have a lot of students uh, and postdocs and you know other people that I work with in Edinburgh and colleagues around the world that are presenting lots of cool research. You know that that I'm a small part of a lot of these projects, but it's just really cool to see all this new science uh, being presented for the first time. And there's nothing better than you know seeing uh, your students and your postdocs getting up in front of big crowds and talking about their research with such enthusiasm. Some at the conference are ensuring that each meeting is more inclusive than the last. Kelsey Stilson is a postdoctoral researcher and the chair of the diversity committee. I'm here to kind of promote a diverse and equitable society 
uh, there's been a lot of systemic issues within paleontology, and um, that needs to be recognized in order for us to go forward. There's all these different dimensions of diversity that we normally don't think of, and we want other people uh, to have their voice shown too. So uh, here in the diversity committee, we have lots of different events that we hold, like the round table forum, where people can come and learn about all these different aspects of paleontology or furthering their careers. So we're trying to get um, different voices from all over paleontology. And part of that is making room for those voices. You might not ever understand someone's lived experience, but that doesn't mean that you don't accept it. The understanding comes with time. Acceptance can come before understanding. What we learn if we talk to each other is we have a lot more in common when we're all experiencing, we're all struggling, and we just don't know it. But is attending the conference just about networking and research? Or is there some other charm to it being in person? My name is Stuart Sumita. I'm a professor of biology at the California State University in San Bernardino. And I'm the incoming vice president for the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology. What's the purpose of scientific conferences like this? Well, a lot of people would tell you the scientific conferences are for us to get together, share our research, uh, talk about the latest uh, events in, in our field, which, which it is, don't get me wrong, but it's much, much more than that. One of the things that happens in a scientific conference is that you interact with other people. You don't just talk to them, okay? You interact with them, and so conferences are, are gathering places. They're places of serendipity. Uh, just today, for example, I was looking at a specimen with a colleague. We couldn't figure out what it was. I saw another colleague walk by and I asked him, do you have any idea what this is? He looked at it and he says, oh my goodness, where did you get that? Neither of them knew one another. But suddenly, because we were all together in the same place, now there's a collaboration between two people that never would have happened otherwise. And those are the kinds of things that happen when people gather and they communicate and they communicate about their passions. And that's really what happens at conferences. People of similar passion come together. And what are you hoping to get out of this conference, SVP specifically? Uh, you know, I get to see people that I care about, people who are, are of similar uh, interest, people who my son likes to say are as nerdy as me, right? But we also are helping to support the profession of vertebrate paleontology. And let's face it, vertebrate paleontology is one of the most popular of sciences. We are the hook, along with oceanography and marine biology, that brings people into science. So we have a huge responsibility to maintain and advance our science because we're the gateway science for young people throughout the world. These conferences are vital for advancing the sciences, from sharing our official findings and catching up with old friends, to serendipitous moments in hallways between presentations. Each of these moments create connections. Not only are these important for our individual mental health, and more so in these highly isolating years, but also crucial for building the scaffolding on which we create our ideas. Personally, after many years of stagnating seclusion, the meeting refreshed my perspective on research and refilled my emotional cup. Until next time, SVP.